Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome. My name is Peter Loveman, and I'm one of the members of session at Hope Presbyterian Church, and want to welcome you to worship with us this morning. We're using the YouTube premiere option, which means the content has been previously recorded and then aired live. If you're watching this live with us, please let us know in the live chat so that we can welcome you. If you're watching this on a computer browser, that's probably just to the right of this video. Today, during worship, Reverend Dr. Michael Bow will be bringing the message, and then Reverend Rosemary McMahon will be celebrating Holy Communion with us. So if you haven't prepared your elements yet, whether it be wine, juice, crackers, uh, bread, whatever you have available, please go ahead and do that now. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to the prelude. Thank you. 
Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Happy are we when our treasures cannot be quantified. Happy are we when our knowledge is tempered by mystery. Happy are we when our pain is held in the balm of love. Happy are we when our delight comes from beyond ourselves. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Jesus, lover and friend, you showed us holiness in action through the way you lived your life. You gave away your power in the service of others and turned our understanding of blessedness on its head. We confess our capacity to be so consumed by our own agendas that our concern for the needs of others shrinks all too rapidly. Stir up your spirit in us, Lord, 
that we may experience the happiness and blessing of being your disciples and more than name only. Strengthen us to be people who sing and live your song of love, who willingly serve our neighbors, even those we don't especially like, who seek justice and mercy for all, and who truly repent of what is past and look with anticipation for what is yet to come. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Beloved, through the love shown to us by Jesus, we can be sure that we are God's children now. The Spirit of Christ is among us in this gathering, and the nature of Christ is revealed within us. We are becoming more and more like Christ every day. Therefore, let us live joyfully as God's people, saints and instruments of God's way. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. To all who are gathered here, the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Our scripture reading for this All Saints Day is in Revelation chapter 7 beginning with verse 9. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hand. They cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our Lord God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, "They, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our second reading is found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1-3. through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, 
we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. A few weeks ago, I began to think about how to put together this All Saints Day worship. I wanted to figure out a way to make it meaningful despite worshiping virtually. I emailed some of the people here at Hope, and we hashed through some of the details, and there was some confusion about who were actual members of Hope and who were not. Then I recognized that there could possibly be some other confusion going on on top of that confusion. Confusion about COVID-19. Confusion about the election coming up in a couple of days. Confusion about the future. Confusion about what happens in the end. What happens in the end? This is especially confusion when we are talking about our loved ones. Because no one likes the word dead. No one really likes the idea to, about talking about people who are dead. We prefer phrases such as, they have passed away, or went on to be with the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with these phrases. Uh, but let's face it. We don't like the finality of death. Sometimes people think that death is the end of our lives on earth and the end, period. Of course, we do not believe that. But where do we get this idea that there is something after death? In Old Testament times, People believed that when their loved ones died, they went down to Sheol. There was this place of the dead. Now, it wasn't a place for eternal punishment, but it was sort of a holding place. And there was some confusion about how Sheol actually worked. But if you asked someone back then where their loved one was, the answer was... Sheol. Several centuries later, we find in the book of Daniel a thought about resurrection. Daniel suggests that people will be judged to determine wickedness or faithfulness. And this idea is reinforced in the Gospel of Luke in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The story ends with, you had your chance to be righteous and you didn't. So now the question is, how do I obtain righteousness? How do I make sure that I am faithful? How can we obtain everlasting life so that I don't get left behind? There was this belief that you had to be holier than everyone else. And that seems to me to be a hopeless case. Jesus teaches us something different. We're taught that it's not our holiness that saves us, but instead it's God's grace. So over the span of several hundred years, people changed their belief that death was the end to death was not the end at all. They even started to believe that life after death would be the best life for them. And this was a huge comfort, especially under the circumstances. The book of Revelation, it's quite popular in common culture. There's a lot of material available in the form of Hollywood movies, trade novels such as the series that I flippantly referenced, 
and radio shows that are meant to exploit fear as to what will happen in the end. Yet, where most popular culture references miss about Revelation is that it was not written to scare people, but instead to comfort them. Now, I realize this may be a new idea. Revelation is considered to be apocalyptic literature. And apocalyptic literature, it just means that it's filled with a lot of symbolism, and I'm very much oversimplifying. But this includes everything from white robes to palm branches to singing angels, scorching heat, lamb's blood, and many, many other things. Yet, despite all the artistic visions, we see God sitting on the throne, angels worshiping God, God spreading a tent over the multitude, comforting and wiping away tears. The great multitude includes all kinds of people, both Jew and Gentile, male and female, African and Greek, whose unity rests in their recognition that salvation belongs to God. This proclamation recognizes that salvation does not belong to anything or anyone else other than God. And because of that salvation, our loved ones and us can be called children of God. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, John writes. He makes it very clear in this passage that it is by the lavish, generous love of God that we can be called children of God. So today, on All Saints Day, we can come together as a family of faith, children of God, and not only bear each other's burdens, but also claim for those who have died the hope and confidence that we have together in the risen Christ. Through the credibility of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, we claim our legacy, which is grounded in the victory of Christ over sin and over the grave. And how blessed are we to know that no matter how battered or beaten by the previous days ahead, that our robes are washed in the blood of the Lamb, that shelter has come our way through God, and that the shepherd is guiding us to springs of the water of life. So no matter what is going on all around us, we should always remember to sing. Day or night, in the desert or in the oasis, seeing that salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. With everything going on, it's easy to lose sight of God's grace and glory and stop singing. Revelation reminds us of the heavenly choir reminding the saints, both living and dead, that the good news is heard and it still is around. The saints' cry may not always sound harmonious, but it's always a joyful noise. So the saints listen while they join in the song. And even in the midst of all our troubles, war, social upheaval, famine, luxury, COVID-19, whatever trouble or prosperity, the saints cannot keep from listening. Because there's good news in the song. Good news that they will hunger no more. Thirst no more. The sun will not scorch them, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them, providing them springs of life wiping away tears. There are many things that are unknown to us. We are not promised that life will not be difficult. However, because of the love of God, we are children of God. 
And I would bet that sometimes in life, it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like we're children of God. Sometimes it's hard to swallow that God will work all things out in glory when things are not working out today. First John tells us that what will be has not yet been revealed. The only thing that we are told is that when Christ is revealed, we will be like him and see him as he is. Today, we join in the faith of the saints before us, reminding us that this life is only the beginning. There really will be even more glorious future when Christ appears. Till then, we have to endure whatever great ordeal we can until our robes are whitewashed with the blood of the Lamb. And I can tell you this in confidence because salvation belongs to our God. Our God is still seated on the thrones. On the throne. Angels, elders, and the saints that have passed before us are still worshiping God and they are still singing because he has given them victory. There's no silence in Revelation's vision of God's throne, for no one can keep from singing or listening before the throne. From creation to redemption and beyond, the crowds gather around the throne in numbers too large to count. Saints from every nation listen and sing, and God keeps hope alive in our world today despite how scary and confusing it may seem. There are a lot of things confusing about death and the end. However, our faith tells us that Christ conquered death. And our hope today is the hope of the saints before us, that through Christ Death has been defeated. While some days are harder than others, because of Christ, the Lamb of God, this is not the end. Thanks be to God.
Pray with me. O God of resurrection and new life, we thank you for the good news of our faith that offers a grand finale of when the time will come when there will be no more sickness, mourning, pain, or sadness. Even death itself will be defeated once and for all. You have given us an advanced sign of this future reality through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this grand finality where there will be nothing but peace, joy, love, and justice. We hope for the day when our tears will be wiped away. Thank you for reminding us of this good news today. Living God, in whom there is no shadow or change, we thank you for the gift of life, eternal life, and for all those who have served you well that now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and for these dear souls most precious to us. Today, we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into glory. And while these saints may not have been members of Hope Presbyterian Church, we are thankful for their connection in their many different ways. So today, we remember Noel Cassidy. Rob Horde, Dennis Gluck, and the Reverend Dr. Chris Hauer. And now we take a moment of silence so you can mention your saint silently in your heart or out loud. Just as we give thanks for those saints who have gone before us, remind us that you call us to be your saints, your children. In this particular time and place, help us to be faithful in bringing people and the church that you call us to be. You hold all of us in the great arms of your mercy and you throw a tent over us. You wipe away our tears, and now with confidence as the people of God, let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends at Hope and anyone else gathered with us, this is the joyful feast for the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south, from all times and places to sit at table and bask in God's eternal presence. This, wherever we are gathered, is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all those departed, those absent, those we miss, those we love, those gathered around monitors and TVs, those brokenhearted and those who are whole, to be together wherever we are in spirit. We give our thanks and praise to the God of Abraham and Sarah, 
Miriam and Moses, Joshua, Deborah, Ruth, David, priests, prophets, Mary, Joseph, apostles, martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, our spouses and siblings, our children and friends to all generations, for you, everlasting one, made us all. You fashion us into one people and continue to love us even when we deny our own ancestry. You continue to call us home to you through saints dedicated to your will. Blessed are you, most gracious God, for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who lived in accord with your will to the point of laying down his life for the good news he preached and passed on to us. Each time we gather around this table, we remember not only Christ's sacrifice, but his offer to each one of us to begin anew, again and again. And so we remember how on the night of Christ's betrayal, as he sat at his own table, surrounded by his own loved ones, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me and of how much I love you. And after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he said, this cup is the sign of the new covenant. My blood shed for you, each one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me and of how much I love you. Spirit of the living God, make us one as we partake of these your gifts so we might be in communion with you and one another. As we break bread together, may our eyes be open to see your glory shining through all the saints of times past and present and yet to come. As we lift the cup of salvation, may we be strengthened to follow your way, mingling our praises with all the saints gone before us for God's new day of justice and peace, harmony and reconciliation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And now feed on them in your hearts with faith, and with thanksgiving.
Once again, I cannot begin to tell you how delighted and happy I am to join with all of you in worshiping today. I'm thankful for the people who come later, and I'm thankful for the people who join with me at the premiere. So today, on this All Saints, as you go, remember that God is still on the throne and people are still singing God's praises because salvation is from the Lord. So may you join in that song. May you sing the loudest when whatever ordeal you're going through is the hardest. May you take courage as you face each new challenge, knowing that God will wipe away your tears. And may you be blessed from our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, who is with the saints before us and is with us now forevermore. Amen. Oh,